Good evening, I'm Brian Reagan. I'm here from the Lake Butler Church of Christ in Lake Butler, Florida. We're in Union County. And uh, tonight we are having our video services uh, in the interest of uh, health and safety as far as winds and various debris. Uh, for roadways, we wanted to make sure that uh, our people were able to uh, stay safe and stay well. So we welcome you, though, to our uh, video feed service. And tonight we're going to look at a little bit of the backstory of Joseph. And uh, But right now, Brother Tyler's going to open us up with a song. And then we'll have a lesson, another song, and a closing prayer. What's our first song, Tyler? 578 in the big book we will glorify. We'll sing all four verses. We will glorify. 578. We will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the Lamb. We will glorify the Lord of Lords, who is the great I Am. Lord Jehovah reigns in majesty. We will bow before His throne. We will worship Him in righteousness. We will worship Him alone. He is Lord of heaven, Lord of earth. He is Lord of all who live. He is Lord above the universe. All praise to Him we give. So hallelujah to the King of kings. Hallelujah to the Starting our set of lessons on Joseph as we looked at uh, great people and events of the Bible. And uh, because we are teaching that in the various teens and adult classes, we wanted to go back and pick up some of the backstory. And in Genesis 35, we pick up the return of Jacob and his children uh, into the land of promise. And here's what it says. And God said unto Jacob, Arise and go up to Bethel, and dwell there, and make there an altar unto God that appeared to you when you first fled from the face of your brother. And Jacob said unto his household, and to all that were with him, Put away the strange gods that are among you, and be clean and change your garments. Now I want you to pause with me on that one for a moment. Jacob is coming back into the land. He has 11 of his 12 uh, children. And it's an interesting thing. He has spent decades in the land that Abraham left, his grandfather left, when he was 75 years old. A long time has passed. And his family has uh, multiple uh, gods and deities and things like that. And the simple fact is here on this is that uh, when we come to the Lord, there are a lot of things that uh, maybe we knew better, maybe we uh, had been taught better, but there are any number of things that have come into our lives that have taken the place of the Lord. And so Jacob gives them the instruction, get the false gods out, purify yourselves, and change clothes. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more. But this is the situation his family's in. So when we move into the story of Joseph and you see the attitude of his brothers towards him, um, they haven't grown up with a covenant mindset uh, like their grandpa Isaac. Uh, they've been gone from their grandfather Isaac and his faith uh, 
Most of them have never, ever even seen him. And none of them have ever met Abraham. And so, uh, so verse 3 says, Let us arise and go up to Bethel, and I will make there an altar unto God, who answered me in the day of my distress, and was with me in the way in which I went. One of the things with Jacob, if you remember and think back, Jacob had to flee his brother because he lied to his dad, he deceived his dad, and he stole from his brother. Um, and he did it all with the help, encouragement, and even costume and garment assistance of his mother. So when he fled, um, he literally had the clothes on his back and not much else. And he had not reached a place yet of full belief and trust in God. And it's this journey that prompts him to come to understand himself and others. And it is this journey that helps move him toward God. But he acknowledges that God has been with him this whole time. He acknowledges that God has spared him a lot. And even though at the hands of his father-in-law, um, he received <laughs> from his father-in-law a, a, a more than fair repayment for what he had done thus far in his life. Um, he found out that his father-in-law was better at messing with people than he was. And so now as he's coming back, he still listens to the Lord. He believes in the Lord and he wants to be obedient to God. And so it says, And they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hands and all their earrings which were in their ears. And Jacob took and buried them under the oak or hid them under the oak which was by Shechem and they journeyed and the terror of God was upon the cities that were round about them and no one pursued after the sons of Jacob so Jacob came to Luz in the land of Canaan that is Bethel he and all the people that were with him and he built there an altar and called the place El Bethel because there God had appeared to him when he had fled from his brother. We want to be careful about idols. Notice that the idols were statuary, but the idols were also built into their jewelry too. And in America, most preachers don't talk about this because they don't like getting in trouble with their churches. If someone were to throw a Bible down in front of you, would you say, well, that's their First Amendment right? But if someone, oh, took your favorite sports team flag and threw it down and spit on it. Would you take them to task? This is, this, this for me is what I call the simple idol test. In the order of priorities. Now on one hand I say this is just a book, but what this book is the symbol of, what this book represents, is the God of all eternity. It's his written and recorded divine will for us. When I say the Pledge of Allegiance, and, and here's the first part. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Now, here's the only reason I still say the pledge. And to the republic for which it stands. I don't pledge anything to the United States generically. I do have an allegiance to the flag that stands for the Republic of the United States. Now some people argue and say, brother, it's not a republic any longer. It doesn't change that the flag represents a republic 
and I as a citizen believe in the Republic. But in the structure, in the hierarchy of values, of what's more important, if someone wants to rip a Bible to shreds and spit on it and set it on fire, and someone else wants to do that with the flag, which one do I take care of first? Which one inside of me elicits the strongest emotion? If the disrespect of the things of God is not higher than the disrespect of the things of man, then I've got an idol problem. So that when you go back to what Jacob said, and you say, yeah, no, this is, this is going to be a short class because when we do these, I go short, all right, because I want to give you something in, in, in timely fashion. But because you're at home in comfortable chairs and you might be snacking on chips or drinking coffee or having nachos, uh, you know, for all I know, you might be having pizza, nachos, and, and, and uh, Dr. Pepper tonight. Um, I don't want you to, you know, uh, get, get tired because I took a 45-minute class, right? He says to them, um, get rid of the idols. Get rid of the external things that are keeping you tied to the land that we came from. Get rid of the external things that are tied to your grandpa, Laban. Get rid of all those gods that that was the reason God called Abraham away from that land because it was eat up with idolatry. He says, get rid of the externals. And so they brought him the statuary and they brought him their jewelry that was infested with their idols. You say, yeah, no, they made jewelry that, jewelry, jewelry for a long time was tied to your deities, um, you know. And so he tells them, get rid of the external. Then he says, clean yourselves, or purify yourselves. Get rid of the external, clean up the internal, and then he tells them, change your clothes. Why change your clothes? There was a time in America where we had these things called uniforms. Okay? And so, no, I'm a big fan of uniforms. Um, if I could, I would wear a uniform to designate that I'm a preacher. Uh, to most people, they think that means I wear a suit. And when I go to hospitals, they think I'm there as an attorney trying to do malpractice stuff or something. Um, you know, but <clears throat> when I see a doctor, I want a doctor to look like a doctor's supposed to be. Um, when I see a nurse, when I see um, a law enforcement officer, when I see a firefighter, Your clothes change your mindset. One of the reasons I have retained the Oriental training uniform for martial arts is because when my students come in after a day of being at school, them being able to change clothes allows them to change their mind and change gears for what for what we're going to do training-wise. There's a reason why militaries make everyone suit up and look the same. Because when you look the same and, and you know that with that uniform comes a certain train of thought, you start to think the same, move the same, breathe, all this stuff comes together. And in him telling them to change their clothes, he's telling them it's time to change our identity. We're going to make this altar to God. And in making the altar to God, we're going to become an altar of God. Because as Genesis 35 will go on and say, the Lord will tell Jacob to be fruitful and multiply. And he'll say, out of you will come a nation and a company of nations. And that's an interesting phrase. 
The nation that came out of Jacob is Israel. But the company of nations, we've talked about this before. I want you to think about all of the people that were carried away in the Assyrian and Babylonian captivities. Some that went into the southern regions of Russia, some that went into uh, Eastern Europe and Southern Europe. Some of them, uh, by other means, ended up in the British Isles and other places in Spain. Do you realize that the promise to Jacob that he would become a company of nations and out of him would come a nation, but also a company of nations, that that promise from God is still in play. 3,850 years later. And so what he says to them, and, and I want you to think about that too. Someone says to me one time, Tyler, they say, you know, you should give practical things that people can apply in church. Uh, I do. I say what God's been saying for like 4,000 years, but like no one's been listening. You say, well, change the message. I can't change the message. He's been saying the same thing for 4,000 years. It's not, it's not my job to change it. Clean up the external. Clean up the internal. And it's time to change your identity. What's our final song here, Tyler? Uh, Jesus, keep me near the cross. 383. Jesus, keep me near the cross. Take this time this evening and, and meditate and say, what attachments do I have that are higher than my attachment to the Lord? It's time to get those out. Get rid of them external, get rid of them internal. And it's time to put back on Christ. Christ provides our clothes. Christ will be the one that will give you your change of identity. He paid for it all. And tonight, if you would uh, desire that, Feel free to send us a message on Facebook. We'll reach back out to you if you need more information about coming to the Lord in obedience. Or if you just need prayer. Whatever, whatever that we might be able to do to assist you spiritually, please let us know. Go ahead, Brother Tyler. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There are precious Yes, we've done wrong and bring us back together the next point in time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.